When there is a mosquito in your bedroom, you cannot sleep. Even if it's wearing an Athena outfit. Same with other players. If there is someone on your ship, you cannot bail. Sometimes you just want to PvE, complete voyages, and mind your own business. Especially after having a hard day at work. Sea of Thieves tends to be a game where you just want to sail into the sunset and chill. On other times, you want to PvP and send as many souls to the ferry. The only common factor that will prevent both from happening is your ship sinking. Yes, I'm being Captain Obvious here, but have a grog. There's a reason why most players aim to board a sloop. Because as a solo slooper, if you are down, you are done. So, how can you prevent that from happening? This is where throwables come in play. The firebomb and blunderbomb. Adding to that, the super sacred sudden sword launch. If you manage to keep borders away, you will always win. So, by optimizing your defense strategies and making your ship immune from borders, you will always be able to bail. This video will cover several boarding attempts from a duo sloop. I ended up losing the fight, but not the battle. I sunk when they finally managed to board my ship and take me down. In the beginning, I thought that the Free Democratic Party was on that sloop, but apparently they were teaching me some Portuguese. I'll narrate over the footage for a detailed walkthrough. If you are new here, thank you for choosing my video. I'm Fuzzy Bond, and I cover honest guides and gameplays. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I believe that solo slooping is the foundation of a good crew. If you know how to manage a ship by yourself, then you can definitely do more with a team. Sloops are one of the easiest ships to bail from, yet the hardest to sink. In my adventures, they are the most I worry about. It seems like me and that Athena ship are interested in each other. They have a level 5 I'm strong flag and I have a merchant flag, which means we can both see each other in the map. This is first contact. I have no idea how skilled they are, so we just start exchanging fire. No kegs in crow's nest, so that is not an option. My first impression is that they haven't watched my cannon's aiming guide. Notice here, after they launch someone, I'm standing at a distance from the ladder with a blunderbomb. It's the best way to prevent borders from your ship almost at any time. And yes, better than a blunderbuss. You don't need to reload. Throwing two in a row is faster than two blunder shots. And you can knock back from a much further distance. Always aim to where the player is going to be next so you can send him back. When you are solo slooping, only carry blunder bombs, as I think of them as essentials in sloop defense. And for fire bombs, they are for offense, since in most cases you would not want to use them on your ship. On the other hand, make sure you assign or know the hotkey for throwables for easy, quick access. They move to chain shots, as they know it will be hard to board this afro merchant which is a good play from their side. After getting my mast, they definitely want to send a border. The point of this is to immobilize my ship for easy boarding and keep me distracted with the mast, so ladders can be clear. If you are about to lose your mast, always grab the sails as soon as you hear the mast cracking. This way, the distance to raise it back up is much closer than pulling it from a full drop, which will reduce your time away from the ladder. My ship now has holes in it, so I keep going to lower deck so I won't get knocked off the ship. Slopes don't fill up quickly, so stay calm and don't worry about it filling up. It's fine to bail every once in a while until the path is clear. Do not repair with low health if you are within their firing range, cause nothing takes 100% of your health from a distant gunshot. Assuming only one player is shooting. 
While keeping my sails angled, both of us exchanged fire from a close distance. The reason why they were able to catch up with me is their helmsman stayed on the sails and kept them angled at full times for full speed. As for me, whenever I bailed and sails got out of full bellow, they got a bit closer, so they ended up boarding and dropping my anchor. Now my aim here is to get him off as soon as I can, so I can raise my anchor again and sail for supplies. Just like the previous blunderbomb knockback, I throw one behind him so I can fly off the ship. Even though I'm a flintlock person, I have a terrible habit of forgetting to reload. You can ask my viewers on Twitch. Don't be like me, always reload. I'm almost dead and I can't heal with him around, so the only solution is a desperate sword lunge. He still could have reached me, but didn't react fast enough. I try to quick dip and grab the ladders to put the fire out, but I grab it too soon. It's a way to put the fire out quickly. Feel free to practice that by setting yourself on fire, then jumping to the bottom of the ladder and back up again. Make sure to put the fire out before repairing any holes. The constant flow of water will be good for quick extinguishing of the fire. And a small hint, you can also put out canopy fires from the bottom. If you need more information about that, watch my secrets of fire guide on the top right. I don't have enough planks, yet I want to fight them. So the best way to do that is to fire at them while staying out of their cannon range. And we do that by sudden turns. My closest solid object is a shipwreck. Harpooning from shipwrecks is one of the most underrated mechanics in the game. Notice I angled sails to where the wind will be after turning the ship. I will quickly turn, then get a sudden push to be right front of them after turning. As players usually never expect that. Mission successful, captain is off, a bit of damage done, and Jack Sparrow is a bit too excited. As you can see, they are going in circles because both were off the ship. And they almost sunk. Unexpected maneuvers are usually what gets the other ship to crash. I did a small turn with a harpoon to give a false impression that I'm going around the island. But as you can see, I did a full U-turn after that. It's fine to trade some damage in exchange for distance. It caused them to anchor their ship so they won't crash. If I was chasing someone like me, I would hate me. But hey, isn't that what sloop survival is about? The point of this guide is to prevent borders. But if I had planks, I would have dived head first into their ship. Now it's safe for me to get planks from the sea post, of course. The mermaid spawns behind it, because that's precisely where I am. This is fine. It's not like my ship has holes in it or anything. Taking a tour around islands is always refreshing. But I think Dodo Airlines should take over transportation in Sea of Thieves, as based on my experience, they never sent me to the wrong island. Now that I have supplies, I turn back towards them for a fight. I use the same trick against the galleon from my other video. But this time, I use blunder bombs to knock one off the cannons. Other of the wheel, then third is a firebomb to prevent them from getting back to the helm and cannons for a distraction. A couple of minutes later, and island hopping for supplies, I decided to go to Weaver's hideout, as using towers from islands and forts is a nice mechanic. Mass down, and a rain of cannonballs. Unfortunately, they turned left and went out of cannon range. Otherwise, this would have been their end. Now that I have supplies, I can fight them more often. They chase me again. As they got closer, I decided to launch blunder bombs, because damage won't sink them. So keeping them away from cannons is a better option. Nothing is better than invisible hit reg. They get my mast again, 
but I immediately grab it and turn left so I can stay behind them and out of their cannon range, which prevented them from boarding my ship. I raise the mast and we continue the chase. After a successful ram, they managed to get me, but not my ship, yet. Notice that I didn't rush down, as it's obvious. He's waiting there with a rocket launcher to one-tap me. The best time to engage with a blunderbuss user is right after a shot, while reloading. I managed to get the guy off my ship, bail, and drop their mast. Always try and count for 10 cannon shots, because right after the 10th you can reveal yourself to shoot at them as the players are restocking. In my case, he had less than 10. But the silent moment gave me the ability to reveal myself, and that's when I fired back. But I am now stuck in a loop, which will mean I can only try. I think I should have stayed on the cannons and occasionally bailed while firing some firebombs. As usual, give the other crew something to do. I did that in my last video, but failed to think of it in this one. And that's the best part of losing. You learn how to prioritize your decisions in the next run. I spawn back and go straight at them. They launch someone to my ship and he manages to board. But now for the super secret sudden sword launch. This technique saved me so many times from players hiding in the bottom of my ship. Players usually stand by the food barrel so they can drain your supplies and get constipated in return. Locate the players by looking through the grill or by hearing. Start charging before he can see you and as soon as you are in, straight into the player with two more slashes. The knockback, if done right, will prevent him from using his gun against you. They decide to surrender and run all the way to Reaper's hideout. They lower the flag, then scuttle the ship. To be honest, they did not do anything wrong. Still, I did get triggered, after all this time, and tell them that it is cheap. As much as I wish the ending for this battle to be different, the point of this guide is to learn how to prevent borders and manage sloop maneuvers. The biggest mistake I have done is here. I should have anchored the ship and blasted the players with cannons and not their ship, as it did not cross my mind that they are going for the flag. But from now on, lesson learned. If players crash parked by any outpost with a level 5 flag, go to the player and not the ship, so you can prevent them from voting. If you learned something from this video, please hit the subscribe button. As you requested, I'll always bring more of the Solo Sloop series, narrated walkthroughs to help you survive your solo journeys. If you want to chat, come to my Twitch. Link and schedule are in the description below. Thank you for your time. Fuzzy here and have a great day. Alright, they sent someone from a far distance to get me with a keg. Because they know that I'm that annoying spec that was here earlier. The difference is... I don't have enough supplies now, so how is that gonna work? We don't know. You can still cross play, but by default, yep. I told you, what did I say? Oh. Oops, that was painful.